The following program is brought to you by First Responder Products, your first choice for Homeland Security and Emergency Response Products. Visit them online at www.firstresponderproducts.com. Hi folks, welcome to the Big Picture on Security, I'm Dan Verton. As many of you probably know, 9-11 claimed two more victims in New York City recently, when two of New York's bravest died fighting a fire that broke out in the former Deutsche Bank building, which was severely damaged during 9-11 when the Twin Towers collapsed. And while there is a lot to be said for the reasons it has taken the city so long to tear the building down, the incident has once again raised questions about the communications capabilities of first responder organizations like the New York City Fire Department six years after 9-11. For some perspective on this and other issues, I sat down with former Secretary of Homeland Security Tom Ridge near his office just a few blocks from the White House here in Washington, D.C. And the nation's first Secretary of Homeland Security came out swinging and had a lot to say about our nation's communications capabilities and cybersecurity preparedness six years after the worst terrorist attack in U.S. history. Here's a look at that interview. Well, first of all, I think uh, hundreds of millions of dollars have been put at the disposal of uh, state and local government to support first responders in uh, training and exercises, but also in acquiring uh, equipment, which is relevant not just vis-a-vis -vis potentially against a terrorist attack, but it's an, almost an all-hazards approach that I think we're thinking about in a post-9-11 world. I think the, the greatest efficiency now nationwide across the board uh, is the lack of a national uh, broadband public safety communication network so the police and the fire and the emergency responders and everybody else can uh, get up on the net get up uh, on one bandwidth and talk to one another now the FCC is making uh, very aggressive and I think finally very appropriate strides to create a uh, interoperable nationwide uh, system but I think if you talk to the first responders around the country that's the most important thing they need at the scene is information and the ability to connect with one another. We don't have it yet nationally, but we're working toward it. Um, I, I want to ask the obvious question, which is, you know, we're six years out yeah. now, so why is it taking us? Listen, I, you can, I have asked myself post 9-11 world, why the hell it's taken so long, so long, six years after 9-11 to respond to what the 9-11 Commission and every policeman and fireman and everybody involved in 9-11 said was the most critical need, i.e. an interoperable public safety communication system. Uh, Congress talks a lot about it, haven't done much about it. Uh, the equipment providers out there, they're all still selling the wares, they're selling the old technology, or oh, there are patches available. But finally, the FCC uh, took the bold move uh, just a, a week or two ago to move that process along. And so hopefully, uh, the first responders in the, near, in, in the near future, all of them nationwide, will have access to a public safety uh, network uh, that at the end of the day, if you ask them, they want the equipment, they want the training, they need to talk to one another. And if they can establish a system where they get video, data, and voice all on one system, it will go a long way to protecting the lives of the citizens they're committed to protecting and, and saving, but also protect and save their own lives. I don't, th this, the, the question of uh, the interoperable communications, I think, is, is uniquely uh, at the doorstep of the Congress of the United States and the FCC. Uh, look, there are a lot of people out there who've been talking about it, uh, and there are probably a lot of people out there whose vested interest is, well, we just keep the old system up as long as we can. Uh, there's some technology out there. We can patch it together. But, I, you know, the, the folks responding to crisis, uh, don't need to know how it works, they just need to know that it's available to them. And I think finally, finally, after six years, there's some momentum to build that system for them. And I think it's about time. Good move. Yeah, well, I like the fact that the cyber security uh, uh, czar, for lack of a better word, has much more visibility. Um, because I said before, 
uh, I don't think most Americans appreciate that just about every aspect of their lives where they interface with either the government or a company or somebody else is in some way is affected by the Internet. And uh, a disruption, whether it, for whatever the cause of the disruption is, can have a, uh, a dramatic, can have a personal impact, can have a dramatic impact uh, nationally. And so I think the fact that the country has raised the visibility of cyber protection is a good thing. At the end of the day, uh, the solutions will be provided uh, by the private sector. Uh, the solutions will be provided by those hardware and software uh, manufacturers who say, who, who spend the extra R&D money to reduce potential vulnerabilities. I mean, a lot of people put applications out there and then a month or two after they're out and say, oh, by the way, here's a patch. We found this vulnerability. I mean, I think that the mindset needs to be, let's push this and poke it and prod it long before we put it in the marketplace to reduce uh, that potential uh, exposure. So, and I think that's the mindset has changed, and I think a lot of these companies are doing it now. But the ultimate, uh, uh, not responsibility, we all have a responsibility to protect cyberspace, but the assets you ultimately bring to that protection, really not so much from the government, but from, the, from uh, private companies. Governor Rich, thanks very much. Good talking with you.